Thanks for staying with us. It's cricket time now. A strong turnout by fans at Savannah Park on Sunday proved to be the tonic the West Indies needed as they beat New Zealand by eight wickets in the third and final T20 match to avoid the series sweep. The Windies were without the services of Nicholas Puran, Jason Holder, Cal Mayers and Obed McCoy, who were all rested. The hosts deliver their best bowling performance of the series, restricting the Kiwis to 145 for 7 of 20 overs. Player of the series Glenn Phillips top scored with 41, while captain Kane Williamson added 24. Odin Smith was the pick of the bowlers with 3 for 29, while left-arm spinner Akil Hussain took 2 for 28. Man of the match Brandon King with 53 and his opening partner Shamar Brooks with 56 led the Windies chase with a partnership of 102, the first century stand for any wicket by the Windies in two years. The Caribbean side ended on 150 for two to win by eight wickets. Let's hear now from stand-in skipper Ralphman Powell. As a boy you dream, it's, it's a pleasure playing for West Indies and to imagine captaining in front of my home crowd, you know, that's a special feeling, you know, last night I talked to the guys and I asked them for their support and they give me that today. A very different bowling compliment today for this third T20 international, would you say it was a more competitive group of bowlers going into this last and final T20 international? No, I think it's, it's, it's clarity, you know, we, we, we sat and we talked last night about how hot the place is, so I don't want the pace bowlers to be bowling 2-3 over on the chart. So that's why I chop and change one over for the pace bowlers, one over for the spinners, you know, just to keep them fresh and keep the New Zealand batters thinking. New Zealand cricket journalist Andrew McLean joins us now. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon to you. All right, so I think it's fitting that I start by asking you about your assessment of the windy showing be, uh, against New Zealand and of course just the overall T20 showing for this year. Yeah, so I guess the West Indies have been in a very lean trot recently. Um, the series against India didn't go particularly well. Uh, they only won one of those matches. Um, uh, and then you'd, you'd have to say they were pretty comprehensively outplayed in the first two matches of the series against New Zealand, even though in the first match the scoreline uh, was actually fairly close in the end. They were, they were pretty handsomely beaten. Uh, but yesterday, was it was almost like a whole other team turned up. Um, as you mentioned already, they made four changes to the side, and each one of those players that came into the side uh, made a difference. And I just got the feeling that they weren't kind of tarred with the same brush, if you like, from the previous losses. And uh, yeah, I thought I thought they were super impressive. And it, but it kind of begs the question: Why, uh, for example, uh, Alzari Joseph and Akil Hussain uh, and Drakes weren't playing in the previous matches? Um, I just felt they had a bit more firepower with the ball yesterday. Um, uh, they took more wickets uh, and that yesterday than they have in any of the other matches, New Zealand wickets that is. And uh, they've just put New Zealand on, under a lot of pressure. The New Zealand players' timing was out. Um, they just couldn't seem to find the gaps, they couldn't seem to find the boundary. And then when the West Indies came out to bat, just super, super impressive. Uh, Brandon King and Shamar Brooks. Um, I mean, those, either one of them probably could have been man of the match, went to King, but um, both Brooks and, and King were, were, were mightily impressive yesterday. And Andrew, I'd also like to know your assessment of the decision, of course, to rest the current captain, Nicholas Puran, and bring in Ravman Powell. And of course, what did you make of Ravman's captaincy? Well, I was a bit concerned actually after the second match, listening to Nicholas Poran's uh, comments after the match. He, I just remember specifically some of the words he used like, um, it is what it is and you can't expect to win every day. And I just thought, wow, he sounds like a deflated man. And uh, obviously management uh, had, had, had picked up on it and they just thought maybe it's a chance to rest Poran. He's obviously been under a huge amount of pressure. so. Clearly, it was a good move um, because of the fact West Indies won. Um, but but Powell marshaled his bowl was really well yesterday. Uh, in fairness, I think he had a better attack. You know, playing two spinners, uh, Hayden Walsh Jr. and Akil Hossain, um, that made a difference because they completely misread the pitch in the second match. They they only played one spinner uh, compared to New Zealand's three. Um, so. 
yeah, they, they just had the right attack for a pitch that was clearly wearing yesterday. Uh, but, you know, Powell was, was brilliant. And then he promoted himself up to number four to uh, finish the job off. I think he made 27 off about 12 balls in the end, uh, including that masterful six right at the very end uh, into the party stand to finish the match. Andrew, given the patchy performances by the West Indies in white ball cricket for years now, and the fact that they are going through a period, as we have seen in this series, where they are, they are fitting players, they are experimenting, they are you know, shifting the batting order and so on. Based on what you saw yesterday, do you believe that this is a team that could strengthen itself and be potent enough to challenge strongly for the T20 World Cup in October? Uh, challenge strongly? I suspect no. Um, but the problem, the problem also with West Indies is that they don't have all their best players available. You know that you take out three or four players, and I'm talking guys like Andre Russell and um, Pollard, obviously retired recently. Um, Carlos Braithwaite's not there. Um, I just feel that the, the team is really inexperienced at the moment. I mean, Devin Thomas batted at number three yesterday. That's got to be at least three places too high for him. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be super confident. Um, you know, one one match is is is, is, a, is a good outcome, obviously, in this series for the West Indies to go with their one victory against India, but they're just not winning often enough. Um, and I feel that the batting's the batting is brittle. Um, below, you know, Shimon Hetmyer was due to come in at four yesterday. Uh, he, he would have batted four. Uh, sorry, he would have batted five probably, but, but Powell went in ahead of him. But assuming that he's number four, um, you've just got a, a, basically a, a clump of all rounders that come in after that. And yeah, I just I think they, they the batting they, they need a one or two more batsmen on the side. Uh, and I don't know, you know, where that where that's going to come, from, where they'll come from. Um, and the other thing that worries me for West Indies is yesterday was different, of course, but um, but it was the spinners taking the wickets. But I just don't think they've got enough firepower in their bowling attack to take early wickets. And you know, the easiest way to stop teams scoring in T20 cricket is to take wickets. And I just don't think enough emphasis is placed on that. You mentioned players missing, and there was a report in the past couple of weeks from Sunil Narayan suggesting that he is willing to return to international cricket. But on the missing players list that you just mentioned, Andre Russell, a lot of fans in the Caribbean are okay with Andre Russell not being a part of this setup because there are questions about his commitment, one, and two, he underperforms when he plays for the West Indies. Granted, he has had some injury issues and so on, but a lot of people feel that, you know, despite his obvious ability as a world-class T20 player, he, he doesn't show it when he plays for the West Indies. Yeah, I mean, I haven't watched enough of, of, of those games to really pass judgment or comment on that. But um, I, I, guess, I guess what I'm just try, trying to allude to is that when you've got a, a fairly small pool of players... Um, and, and no, I mean, it seems to me there's not that many alternatives. Um, you know, this very inexperienced West Indies side um, is it, going to is going to find it hard. You know, on the international stage, particularly in a big tournament like a, a T20 World Cup. Um, just as a comparison, by the way, New Zealand uh, from their squad that's here at the moment have six players from 2014 when they had their last T20 series in. Um, and Dominica. So it just gives you an idea of the relative strength of the side. And yeah, okay, so maybe, you know, Andre Russell might have underperformed uh, for the West Indies, but gee, I'd like to have him on my side. Mm. Final question, Andrew. Uh, when you, a variation on, on what you were, you were asked before, but when you look at the West Indies and the names that aren't available or the names that were arrested, imagine a West Indies squad at its strongest. And if you agree, that in the T20 version of the game, there are teams that have a fear factor around them. With all their big guns available, do the West Indies carry that fear factor in the T20 game? Well, I guess you're probably alluding to a team like England, for example, that is just stacked with talent at the top of their order. Um, teams will be fearful of them, although they haven't gone brilliantly this summer. But 
you know, that they have the fear factor. I, I just couldn't say that about the West Indies. I, I just don't think, I just don't think they're batting strong enough, and I don't think they have, um, you know, wicket-taking bowlers. So, no, I, I just don't think there is a fear factor. But the one thing the West Indies do have, and they have it in, in you know, loads of this, is they've got explosive lower-order batsmen. And what I'd love to see and um, mentioned this on commentary the other day, I'd love to see someone like Powell bat, bat at the top of the order. I mean, I know Brooks and King were brilliant yesterday, but in the previous match, when they were chasing a huge score of well over 200, you know, I'd like to see someone like Powell go out there because the guy can hit the ball a hell of a long way. And he's also got quality shots through the covers. And, you know, I think, you know, Powell, Shepard, Smith, all of these guys can bat really well, but they just come in way too late. But that, that, that are probably three players I would fear. Andrew McLean, cricket journalist from New Zealand. Thanks a lot for talking to us. And um, we look forward to the ODI series starting on Wednesday. Let's see what happens there. Thanks, man. Thanks. My pleasure. OK, so West Indies winning the um, rubber match, um, losing the series 2-1 and avoiding the sweep. But an interesting discussion here about building a T20 team for the World Cup in October in Australia. And as Andrew just mentioned, he, he rather likes Andre Russell, but there are names like Evan Lewis, a, a quality player who could address some of the deficiencies in the West Indies batting, batting. at the moment. But there's something wrong there. He, he seems not to be available or interested. Yeah, I get the sense that, you know, uh, many of the players that we would hope and want to call on haven't made themselves available or hasn't, you know, shown any sort of interest. I don't know what possessed me this weekend that had me looking at all the T20 matches that we would have played for the entire of 2022. 14 matches and we only won four. Mm. I can't see what you're building, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the verdict. I'm building for the World Cup, mm. I can't see a team taking shape. Um, and it's not that, you know, administrators aren't doing this and selectors aren't picking the right yes. team. It's, it's not that. Mm -hmm. It's the players themselves and the consistency of the performances. How many of the men picked by the selectors and working through and with Phil Simmons have said to Phil, Phil, this is why I deserve my place. Selectors, this is why I deserve my place. So I'm advancing it from the abuse of the usual suspects, Ricky Skerritt and Dr. Shallow and the, and the, and the, and the selectors. And the, I'm looking at the players now. Yes. And from their perspective, I can't see what we're building. Mm, yeah, good point. Still to come, a tribute to this legend, Serena Williams, ahead of her highly anticipated first round clash with Emma Raducanu at the Cincinnati Open on Tuesday. And next, Tuchel versus Conte. Chelsea versus Tottenham, I guess you could call that a draw. In London, facing off, Simon Evans joins us next to discuss.